The first New South Wales woman in private practice to be made QC was Priscilla Fleming. When I uh, left school, I did an arts degree at Sydney University and uh, then got married at 21, had two children in quick succession and then just needed something to exercise my brain and some uh, friends, uh, legal friends, who were lecturing at the BAB course suggested that I might like to do that course. The BAB course being, of course, the Barristers Admission Board. That's right, that's right. And so at first it was just for the mental exercise and I went through that. Because I had a degree, I could do that a little bit shorter. And uh, when I came out the end of that, uh, I said to my father, well, I, I think I'd like to go to the bar, thinking I'd get all sorts of encouragement from him. And instead he said, oh, no, Priscilla, no, the bar, the rough and tumble of the bar is no place for a woman. And despite that, I decided to go to the bar and, of course, when I did get there and proved to be reasonably competent, he was very, very proud of me. I, I managed to get some uh, criminal briefs that was a, a, for the prosecution. That was another advantage of, uh, of my father being so well-known and respected. The uh, Commonwealth Crown Solicitor was very good to me. I did uh, work for the State Crown Solicitor. I did prosecution and defence uh, in uh, criminal law. Uh, the administrative law came a bit later, I think. I suppose when you've got more experience, the, the statutory interpretation needs a bit more experience and that, that came in the later years. I was a counsel assisting in the Juanita Nielsen inquest. Uh, she was a lady in King's Cross who'd been fighting against developers and she disappeared and presumed dead. And uh, it involved some uh, really shady characters from, uh, from King's Cross underworld. And uh, I was cross-examining one of them. He was known as a, a colourful King's Cross underworld identity. Uh, and he was in the witness box and I was uh, examining him. And all of a sudden he dived to the floor and disappeared from view. <laughs> it turned out that uh, he had been uh, in partnership with another of these colourful characters, uh, but now was uh, an enemy of this colourful character. And he dived to the floor because he'd noticed... Uh, what turned out to be a window cleaner at the skylight in the roof of the court and thought that the window cleaner was an assassin come to shoot him in the witness box. There was a, a tradition uh, as you went into lunch, say, in the bar common room, uh, you would take a seat to fill up a table that was already filling. Uh, you wouldn't go and start a new table. You had to go and fill up, say, there were four seats taken and two left. Well, you'd go and take one of them. And uh, the hostility was palpable. People just didn't want you to come and sit at their table. But, of course, you had to. And then, uh, you know, as they got to know you, that got better and better. But, but I always felt uh, that there was still some residual hostility, even in my, my final days at the bar. The late Pat Moore was admitted to practice on the same day as Priscilla Fleming, with whom she was already good friends. She was a pharmacist. I think she'd got honours in her pharmacy course. She was a very, very bright person. And when she came to the bar, the pharmacy background was a great help. She did a lot of patent work involving a lot of chemistry. She also, I believe, later on became a senior member of the Administrative Appeals Tribunal. She did, she did, and um, I think they did patent appeals too, so she would have been very useful there. I was working for a firm called Curry & Curry and I was doing very boring work. I was working as a law clerk after I was admitted to the, to the bar. And one day this man came in. And his name was Mr Nurse. And he said, I'm sorry, but my wife can't come to sign the documents today. She's in court. She's a barrister. But I'll make another appointment for her. And I said, that's very interesting. I'm a barrister too, but I'm working as a law clerk. And he said, I'll tell my wife and she'll give you a ring. So she did. So she invited me to come up to her chambers and uh, she had there on that day about three or four other barristers. I can remember there was Janet Coombs, Priscilla Fleming and Jenny Blackman. And would I be right in uh, guessing that the woman barrister who had invited you, her to her chambers was Mary Gordrin? It was Mary Gordrin, yes. Jenny Blackman took me to her bank that 
did a lot of banking for barristers and they lent me, I think it was $6,000 at that time. And Jenny Blackman went around and found a wig for me and robes and everything that I needed. So in February 1973, that's how I started out in practice. Carmel Marlowe's practice included family law, equity and government work. In my early years, I did a lot of trials. I did a big drug trial that uh, went for eight days and I was very, very junior at the time and all the other barristers who were experienced criminal barristers, their clients ultimately pleaded guilty and I was left on my own because my client wouldn't plead guilty. I was left on my own to run that case when I'd probably only been in practice for about 12 months and there was another case that I was extremely nervous. But after eight days, I eventually won that case. I found at the bar people were extremely courteous and even though I was a female, the judges always treated me with respect and the barristers treated me with respect and it was a very dignified profession. I couldn't see any negatives apart from the fact that it was difficult getting briefs. It was also difficult getting difficult briefs, particularly with the governments, that would sort of advance your knowledge and experience. Most of my briefs I got from the private industry rather than governments. The Commonwealth Legal Aid Commission always gave me a lot of work. As far as being a female, I do think that the area that I practised in, there seemed to be more female barristers. I think that we made a very positive inroads into making things easier for female barristers to come to the bar. 